Hi everyone, um, so I would ask you to bear with me on this because this might be a longer video but there are a lot of things I want to touch on with this one. Uh, so multitask, have something to eat, um, I don't know, uh, do hoover, well I guess you can't hoover, but uh, yeah get comfortable because this one probably will be a little bit longer. Do the dishes, there's one, you can wash dishes well. Listening to me ramble on, <laughs> but yeah, um, but I think it's a, it's an interesting subject. It's something I want to look at a bit. Um, I've been watching a lot of Friends recently, um, and this isn't going to be a, a Friends fanboy video as much as I love Friends the show, uh, but uh, it did get me thinking about something, which is how younger generations or you know, younger people perhaps look at Friends versus uh, people who kind of grew up with the show. Now, I'm a millennial. Uh, this is important actually for the context of the video. I'm a millennial uh, and I'm happy to call myself a millennial. Um, so, you know, the Friends cast, they're all now in their early 50s, right? So they are kind of um, Generation X, that sort of era. But it was a younger generation that sort of watched that show and people of that age, of course. Um, but, you know, people like me grew up with Friends, even though it ended 16 years ago. And I'm just using this as a sort of a case example. It's not by no means the only thing I want to base this on. But the way people look at the show um, from my generation versus slightly younger millennials is interesting because slightly younger millennials tend to pick up on things that would be a bit politically incorrect today. Uh, some of the... Uh, prejudices of the friends for example some of the politically incorrect statements that are used as running gags uh, an example being uh, Chandler's uh, transgender father um, actually I'm not sure if uh, if his father actually had the full operation it was just a transvestite because there's a difference obviously but my point is uh, there are certain jokes that were told in the friends era i.e. 1994 to 2004, that today would be seen as taboo because of the sort of woke revisionism. Um, some of these uh, criticisms are valid enough, but other ones are, I think, just reading too much into it uh, and actually missing the nuance of Friends. Uh, that's one thing I loved about the show. It wasn't one-dimensional. Um, I feel that characters all had positive and negative qualities so they weren't one-dimensional characters um but it got me thinking you know friends was made at a time when in retrospect it seemed like a simpler time i.e the 1990s now of course someone living in the 1990s would have thought the 90s was a more complicated time than say the 70s or the 60s, particularly the 60s. So I think, in a sense, every generation in the Western world, um, by generation I'm not talking about age groups, I'm talking more about actual time periods, um, has a tendency to look back and feel that the past was somehow better. Social critics and so on. Maybe not for people with a woke way of thinking, because they would think the past was terrible, there was all this racism and homophobia and sexism and the past was terrible. But a lot of other people look back at the past as a similar time. Now, it might well be that 20 years from now, I, I highly doubt it actually, but 20 years from now, people will think of this as a simple time. I say I highly doubt it because the world is quite a complex place right now. It always is, but right now it is particularly challenging and complex. We're going through a deadly global pandemic. A new Cold War is almost certainly brewing between China and the West, or Russia and the West, depending how you look at it. Um, maybe China and Russia and the West. Um, international terrorism is as much as an issue as it's ever been. Uh, the power of big social media companies. All of these things are exacerbated now, the world has had pandemics before. The world has certainly had war, going back to antiquity. Um, 
the world has had tensions between great powers going back a long way. We had the Cold War indeed. So some of these problems are not new. But I think that we do in some ways live in a cynical age. And I think that's sad in a sense because I take the view the world is never all good or all bad. I really, really believe that. But even now, with everything that's happening, uh, good can be found. There might just be um, the very odd piece of good news. But as an example, this is just off the top of my head. But uh, I've heard news recently that some species that were previously endangered are now on the rebound. The numbers are increasing again. That's a good thing. For example, Bengal tigers. Um, it's small progress, but it's still progress. Um, I think there is more of an international awareness of climate change. Okay, there's still a huge, huge issues around that, but I think there is increasing global awareness, which means more um, innovative ideas in order to tackle this. It's, it's more on the radar than it was in the past. That's a good thing. Um, I I do wonder is it a case that um the development of development of the internet has played a role in this you know in the past um or even not just the internet but the rise of smartphones one thing i've always found cynical i must admit is in the, in the 21st century you know you go to a party and people are on the phones whereas in the past okay maybe you also had good or bad parties but at least there was a dynamic that wasn't there with the modern era um, but as, again, I think we do have a tendency to look at the past in a dewy-eyed sort of way and forget that there were complexities in a different way in the past. So, okay, today social media causes challenges. It creates cynicism. It creates a situation where people are overly reliant on it. But in the past, um, you know, maybe people were obsessing over emails. Like, did I send that email to my ex or to my friend that I've had an argument with and oh what well, should I regret what I said in that email. And we also sometimes we do forget that technology could be a very good thing. Um it can give us advantages today that we didn't have in the past. So on some level, and I'm guilty of this myself, we take it for granted. We take for granted the opportunities that technology gives us today. Uh, I mean that's on an optimistic note, that's a very good thing. The fact that I can speak into this little camera and people around the world can listen to what I'm saying. That's, I mean, in the 90s, this would have been, whoa, that's incredible. But now it's just like, you know, kind of taken for granted. Um, I think certainly the culture wars has played a role. And again, this is something that has always, there, there has always been a partisan divide in democracies, right? Uh, I mean, we could look at the film... This isn't a well-known film, so subscribers may not have seen it. It's called The Last Supper with um, Cameron Diaz. She's probably the best-known actor in it. But basically, it's a satire about a group of young liberal students who accidentally kill one of their guests, and they start getting car crazy and um, inviting people to dinner that they disapprove of politically and basically killing them off. It's kind of a dark comedy, but it's very funny in certain scenes, and it's quite witty as well. Um, and it isn't what people might expect. It's kind of, uh, there's a good twist in it. So check it out if you get a chance. But anyway, my point is, that was made in 1995, 26 years ago. And it's clearly touching on the culture wars. Now, I think today there are issues that wouldn't have been that hot in the 1990s. Certainly the trans issue would not have been as much of a thing in the 90s as it is today. In the 90s, it would be more... Uh, the battlegrounds would be more like feminism and uh, maybe gay rights and stuff like that. But it, and now the trans issue is a really big one, along with the other issues. But, you know, the 90s, I don't think there was anything on the scale of the Me Too movement or um, anything like that. There was there would have been social movements, of course. It was like the Million Man March in Washington. It wasn't quite a million, it was less. Um, and there were other examples, but I think that definitely, definitely, the rise of social media, the way these platforms are utilised, has definitely probably played a role in widening the parts of the divide rather than bridging people together. Um, on the other hand, 
helped to spread awareness of campaigns. It's helped people power movements. During the Arabian Spring, uh, you know, young Egyptians went to social media to galvanize support for democratic reforms. Um, and there were other examples of that. Uh, young Hong Kongers more recently. Uh, so it can be a good thing. But I, I think sometimes when we look at the modern world, especially in an era where sensitivities are so, you know, it's such a thing. I, I think that's unhealthy. I think that people need to, frankly, maybe toughen up a little bit, put it bluntly. Uh, I think that one of the good things about modern times is increasing awareness of mental health issues. That's a good thing. And if that leads to compassion about how we treat people, that's a good thing. But I don't think it's compassionate and I don't think it's progressive for people to be overly sensitive and to use that overt sensitivity to kind of police how others think. Because that's the other side of this that we're also seeing. So, you know, it's kind of these two, it's a contradiction. On one hand, people are becoming more conscientious and arguably compassionate. But on the other hand, they're becoming more sensitive and with that, more controlling, actually. Um, so there's all these things. There's the culture wars. There uh, is the rise of social media. There is a complex world with complex challenges. We're in the middle of a deadly pandemic. Uh, looking at my country, I'm British. We have some constitutional question marks. Brexit is very far from, uh, you know, sure that this will be a good thing or not. Uh, I mean, this latest fuel crisis. Brexiteers are very quick to say it's got nothing to do with Brexit. Uh, critics are saying, well, actually, it does. I sort of see both sides. I don't think it could just be blamed on Brexit, but I don't think. That's entirely divorced either in terms of the HGV issue. Um, but, you know, in this country, then we have the issue about Scottish independence. Uh, British politics has been kind of unsettled for quite a while now. I mean, in the 2010s, we had four general elections, uh, three referendums. It was just too much. So I kind of want the dust to settle a little bit. Um, because this country, you know, we we took it for granted that we've had political stability for centuries, right? We, apart from Northern Ireland, we have not had significant internal turmoil the way many other countries have. You know, we've had peaceful transfers of power. Um, there's heated views. People have strong opinions. Um, and, you know, sometimes emotions are raw, as we've recently seen with Angela Rayner. But... For the most part, Britain enjoys relative political stability. Um, but in the last sort of 10 years, that has actually been kind of put under the microscope. So thinking of this country, thinking of the wider world, I think for me, the way to look at this is the world has always had challenges. I think uh, actually looking at the 21st century, there has been a certain degree of cynicism ever since 9-11. Because what happened with that event, it was such a raw, such a shocking, such a visceral event. You know, people saw those planes going into the towers. I call it the event that haunted the generation. In the sense that that was really the beginning of the 21st century. Okay, the century began on the 1st of January 2000 or the 1st of January 2001, depending on how you look at it. But really, it began in September 2001, in that sense. Um, and so in the 2000s, you had this growing fear of international terrorism. You had cynicism, uh, these sort of things developing. Contrast that to late 80s and early 90s, when you have the, had this wave of optimism with the end of the Cold War. So the 90s is almost like this little period of optimism in the world. And yet, it wasn't all good. There were some very bad things in the 90s, the Rwandan genocide, the violent breakup of Yugoslavia. Um, so, and there were numerous other conflicts, actually, deadly conflicts. So any period of time, even, you know, people look at the 60s as this period of great uh, kind of flower power and free love and um, self-independence, you know, going against the system. Yet the 60s had a lot of disillusion. 
the 60s had urban unrest, racial tensions. Um, there were things about the 60s that shouldn't be celebrated. So I think every generation has challenges. And for me, it's important to sometimes minimize things. Try not to make your own life too complicated. This is something I need to work on. Sometimes I, I, you know, because I have an interest in so many things, I kind of sometimes put too much on my plate. So minimizing in that sense. So stepping back a little bit and thinking, well, this is the world as it is now. Where we will get through this pandemic. Okay. There hasn't been an attack on the scale of 9-11 in 20 years. Not on that scale. And whatever bad is out there, whatever armed conflict, human rights abuses, cynicism, uh, bitterness, you name it, there's also a lot of good. You know, for every um, unpleasant person, there are nice people, there are kind people, there's generosity. For every, um, every example of injustice, there is an example of unrequited kindness. You know, someone doing a decent thing for a stranger without expecting anything in return. There is, um, there's a lot of good out there, actually. I believe in human nature. I'm not a cynic in that sense. I'm not a pessimist in that all people are awful. Um, I think most people are fun fundamentally decent. Most people. We are in an era where there's so much going on, socio-politically speaking. There are protests, you know, there is campaign movements, there is the culture wars, there is, you know, wokeism versus the right. There's all these things going on. But if we step back a little bit and if we focus on the good things, it's really not that bad. You know, we're going to get through this pandemic. Um, yes, we might be on the verge of a new Cold War. Will that affect the average citizen? Maybe not that much, depending on how we look at it. Um, of course, if you're patriotic, it's of concern. But I think that it's just about stripping things back a little bit and thinking, actually, okay, I don't like the way that this is done, but this is still good. So we can never, ever dismiss the world as all bad or all good. That's how I look at it. I mean, 10 years from now, people could actually look back on this. You know, it's kind of like, to use a British expression, the Dunkirk spirit or the pit spirit, i.e. good comes out of human nature in times of adversity. So people might actually look back on this period of coronavirus. Obviously, they're not going to take any um, pleasure from the, the heartache and the fact millions of people have died. But I think the fact that it was, it was a global challenge. It's sort of like every generation faces a great challenge for the greatest generation it was world war ii well maybe maybe for millennials and um generation z increasingly it might be coronavirus and climate change they are our world war ii they are our great issue um and that can sometimes bring out the best in people with this great challenge i mean i i don't share the views of extinction rebellion that we're all going to be dead in 12 years but I do take the issue of climate change seriously. I don't think people can dismiss it as a legitimate challenge facing the planet. So I do think that is a fundamental challenge to human civilization. Um, and in that sense, it's our great, great struggle of the times. Um, but there's many others as well. Anyway, I'm going to round this up. I, I guess if I was to make one conclusion with this, it is easy to look at the modern world as more complicated, more complex, more polarised. But maybe it's not. Maybe that is just one perspective. Um, the fact that people are more compassionate about things like mental health, the fact that we do have more access to knowledge than ever before, the fact that, um, you know, there's a lot of good out there. Those are all things to celebrate. They really are. Um, also remember, if like me, you're a millennial, if you think about things in a really cynical and negative way, what's going to be like, you know, when we're older, we look back and feel, oh, that was a cynical time. Well, that was our life. That was our youth, you know? 
So that's why it's important to not be so negative and not look at it all in a negative way, in my opinion. You know, so be brave, look forward, um, be your best self. Thanks for watching.